Shooters and reloaders out there, it's Fortune Cookie 45 LC coming to you from the hot lead zone. And what you're looking at is just part of my 44 caliber semi wide cutter Keith bullet reserves. I've got about twice as much as this, but this is not to make you drool or anything like that. It's just that a fella can't have too many Keith bullets. And I mean that. Well, this video is all about a VR to Carl. We just had a real good discussion about water quenching our cast bullets out of the mold. Turns out that for many years, I've been casting for over 40 years, like 43, 44 years. And for a big part of that time, I was casting without quenching the bullets in water coming out of the mold. And I was happy because if I wanted BHN 15, I knew what I needed to do to mix the alloy to get that. If I wanted BHN 18, I knew what to do to get the proper mix of alloy to get that. And I dropped the bullets out of the mold onto old shirts, old towels, anything soft that would catch the bullets and allow them not to be deformed when they came out. And everything worked fine. Bullets shot fine because I had the right size bullets for the guns I was shooting them in. And the reason why I did that was just following instructions. Because look at what Lee says in their instructions for casting Lee bullet molds. Number eight, it says open the mold and drop the bullets right here. Open the mold and drop the bullets onto a soft cloth. An old towel works well. It may require a few taps on the handle bolt to free the bullets. Right there, number eight. That's what Lee says. Now RCBS says this right here. It says open the mold and allow the bullet to drop onto a soft pad on your loading bench. Normally, the bullet will drop readily from the mold. If it doesn't, tap the mold handle hinge pin lightly, never the mold. So again, the soft pad right there. And now the Lyman Cast Bullet Handbook, the most recent one. Lyman is the company that started it all in bullet casting. And if you want to listen to the right way to do things, you got to listen to Lyman. And it says there, let the bullets drop from the cavities. An old towel folded several times will provide the necessary soft landing surface. Have a soft surface prepared for the bullets. An old towel. This is important because cast bullets are soft and can be deformed. Well, this is Mike Venturino saying this, and it's for the most recent cast bullet handbook. Now, it may very well be that that uh, Mike Venturino also does some water quenching also, but you would think that he would mention water quenching in the cast bullet handbook of all places. And as I was talking to Carl, Elmer Keith, Six Guns by Keith. A lot of casting in these books. Nowhere does it mention water quenching bullets. And I've done a lot of reading of Skeeter Skelton's work and no mention of water quenching. Now, one last thing, and that is Roto Metals. By the way, look at that. Roto Metals is going to be having their bullet casting alloys. And these nice what they call nuggets well those are nothing more than just nice size ingots so they'll be selling them in this form now instead of those big five pound bars and guess what it's supposed to be five percent cheaper so i took a survey there it's a survey and i said yeah i'm in favor of that let's let's get those and on this page they have their famous formula for calculating BHN 
based on the mix of the lead and tin and antimony added. And notice there's nothing there. Basic rules for hardening lead. Doesn't say go ahead and water quench to get an extra 10 BHN. Now, of course, some of you out there are going to say, hey, fortune cookie, I know you don't listen to the manuals that closely anyway because Lee also tells us to smoke our molds. And you never smoke any of your molds. So if you don't listen to Lee to do that, then of course you're not going to listen to that drop the bullets onto the soft pad kind of thing. And that's true. Well, I want you all to know that I do water quench my bullets. Now, I've been doing that ever since I read that you get more hardness doing that. And so I go ahead and water quench. And I like to be able to mic my bullets and water quenching cools them off quick so I can mic them anytime I want. So that's part of the reason why I water quench. And I'm sure I'm getting a little bit of, of bullet hardening. But as I was talking to Carl, I don't know if we can go along with everything that we're reading about getting bullet hardnesses over linotype just by water quenching. You're getting in the middle 20s of BHN with water quenching. That's what's being reported. And do we have any reason to doubt that? And the answer is no. If, if someone reports that they're getting BHN 26, why would we doubt that? Just because maybe we're not getting it ourselves, we might be doing something different. Well, here's the reason why I don't really worry about hardness after doing the water quenching, how much hardening I'm getting. Because look at this bullet. I water quenched this bullet. Now, the alloy I'm using will give me BHN 15. And I know what BHN 15, if I do my thumbnail test, I'm going to get a little bit of denting of the corner here of this bullet, but I'm not going to get a big dent like I would if it were pure lead. This I know from casting these kind of bullets without water quenching. So if I go ahead and, and now, so I pick out, see if you can find, find a spot there that's really clear. Let that get in focus there. So get that in focus. Now look at that corner there. When I go ahead and press my thumbnail in there, can you see the dent? That's BHN 15. That's what that tells me. Well, I got I get this way back when when I was casting without water quenching, and I'm getting the same thing now. If this were BHN 26. I wouldn't be getting that. I wouldn't be getting that denting like that. That lead would be like, like steel. It wouldn't dent at all. I'm getting denting. So for our Keith bullets, let's just take one that we just cast. And you'll see that there's a nice corner there. Get that in focus. So let's test the hardness with our thumbnail there. And there you see a little dent right there. That's BHN 18 or 19. We get an extra BHN for water quenching and that's about right. So makes a lot of sense. Well, once again, if we got 10 more BHN from water quenching, wouldn't be able to get any dent at all. So I think it's reliable that we're getting some hardening from water quenching, but not a super amount. It can't be reliably getting over BHN 22 like linotype. But once again, if you're getting over BHN 22 after you water quench, then uh, more power to you and that's fine. And I'm sure that'll work out well for you. Now here's our good 240 grain round nose from Lee and once again we find a nice clean spot there on that edge and let's see what kind of tests we're gonna get with this one there's a little dent so again that's the like this is a reliable BHN 18 or 19 we're happy now 
for those who are espousing getting BHN into the 25s and this kind of thing, well, again, we're not arguing with that, not looking for an argument. If you're getting that, then that's fine. And if those bullets shoot well for you, that's fine too. And I trust that uh, we're going to shoot the right size bullets for our guns and that's going to lead to a lot of good performance for everybody. That's number one anyway. So as long as we're all getting good performance, it really doesn't matter whether you're looking at a few more BHN points. We're not looking at getting into an argument here. But again, if we don't have to, to count on getting a lot of BHN, then it's just as good. Some might criticize my use of the thumbnail to figure out hardness, but it sure works well. I've always got the thumbnail with me, and it didn't cost me anything to buy it. And it really helps me mix my alloys properly, and I don't get any leading because the bullets are properly fitted to the gun. Hardness isn't that big an issue, as long as it's in the ballpark. And also, talking to Carl, by the way, uh, we really don't want BHN to be like 26. That's way too hard for our bullets. We can get leading with our bullets being too hard. Plus, terminal effect will be nil because those bullets will be so hard they'll be brittle and break up on bone. We don't want bullets that hard. And a final case in point is that Missouri bullets, an outfit that we should all have full respect for, would never sell bullets that hard because we have no need for them. Missouri bullets sells hardness optimized bullets and there's ranges from BHN 12 to 18. Best regards to all of you out there and see you next video. Bye for now and bye to Carl.